Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings insights, perspectives, and attitudes of our always thoughtful Democratic guests. Today we're lucky to be joined by Maria Noel Fernandez, a longtime community activist. Maria, thanks for being on Democratic Television. Thank you for having me. So um, you're involved in a lot of stuff. You're an, a community organizer, uh, working for working partnerships. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's learn a little bit about you. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Yeah. Uh, well, I uh, was born in Uruguay, a small but mighty country in South America. Uh, and we came here when I was really small with my parents. And we, I was really raised in San Jose. Uh -huh. um, we came here directly and uh, really kind of had a typical San Jose life and um, what I like to call kind of a typical immigrant family life. And we came here and my parents started working in hotels and restaurants and you know kind of were able to uh, rise through the ranks in hotels and restaurants and they started as a bartender and dishwasher and uh, my mom as a babysitter and housekeeper mm. um, and then they kind of went through the ranks and became one the head of a, a, a hotel and restaurant employees union and another through hotel management so I really saw them work hard and um, come up in San Jose. So you went to San Jose schools? I did, I did. Um, were you uh, taking classes or involved or inspired in a way that led you to be the activist you are today? You know, I think um, I didn't take specific classes. I think really that came much later that I realized that you can actually learn about this stuff. <laughs> um, it was mostly just doing it. You know, I. Um, reflect back a lot about you know being on picket lines and doing precinct walking when I was a kid and seeing my family do that and you know doing my homework in the union hall and um, you know sometimes getting phone calls at 10 11 o'clock at night and hearing my dad on the phone with workers um, I think that really shaped me in understanding um, how important it was to get involved in your community and really what power there was in having people come together around an issue and to fight for an issue and you know my mom kind of always taught me that it was our duty to give back and to make sure that we were leaving this world a little bit better than when we found it. Wow what a wonderful uh, uh, experience to grow up in or, and around in yeah, those 11 p.m. phone calls yeah. that, you, that you overheard your your father happening yeah. having so it does sound like you were inspired as a young at a young age absolutely absolutely and then went to college around here yeah I went to Catholic high school I went to presentation and I did De Anza and I was um, there for a while and moved to San Jose State and continued to I took some poli sci classes and I was uh -oh. already you know I was involved in the community um, but I think having the expertise from local, um, really local activists and local professors really guided me to realize that being a community activist could be a career. Hmm. So what kind of work did you get involved in after college? Well, dur really during college, hmm. um, I got involved in community organizing, um, working with, um, you know, I frankly didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what community organizing was mm -hmm. and the first person that actually shared that with me was not only my father but really um, Cindy Chavez who mm. you know to me was someone that was doing great work in the community and um, I worked a few years for her and um, worked at the city government worked for the city of San Jose oh. for several years um, did some stints abroad did some teaching and then came home and you know, really wanted to figure out what it was that I wanted to do to make change. And I decided that community organizing was the way to do it. So I did that for a few years and then joined um, the state assembly for an assembly member, worked there for a while, and then decided to come back to my roots and come back to organizing and um, joined Working Partnerships USA. But at some point you worked for Sacred Heart Community Services. Yes. And what kind of work did you do there? You know, that was really where I did the most grassroots work that really is most close to my heart, which was around community organizing in the most low-income parts of our um, county. Um, and so we literally went door knocking, door to door, 
um, talking to people about the issues that were important to them and what they wanted to do about it. So we worked on public safety, we worked on immigration reform, we really worked on any issue that community members were worried about and um, together created a plan to make some tangible changes. So did you work to get the community members that you in interacted with involved to step up and to develop their own leadership skills? Absolutely. I mean, that was really what our work was all about, was not about us coming with the solutions, mm -hmm. but really about community members. They are really the experts in their lives and having them decide what it is they wanted and then giving them the tools and resources to help them be successful. Did you do some education about community budgets and having an idea of you know how a bill becomes a law kind mm -hmm. of thing that if you come and talk about crime, uh, you can impact how the police department's budget work or the city's budget works? Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things that we really worked on is not only to find what was wrong, but to really think about and have the tools to figure out solutions. So if you look at the budget, right, if you ask for a budget document, you're going to get five huge binders. And it was really about working with the community members to go through the binders, but most importantly, figure out what it is that they wanted to know and teach them and give them some tools so that they can be successful. So um, what, uh, what do you think people are saying now when you go to the, if what you were to go to the doors? Probably crime, immigration, mm -hmm. um, things like that still are major players. Oh yeah, and I think, you know, affordable housing, transportation, I mean, all those issues are unfortunately issues that continue to affect working families in Santa Clara County and that's why it's so important for people to get involved in those the issues so we can make sure that governments are really reflecting the values and priorities of the community. Now what was it like uh, to knock on a door and have a resident see you there asking for their opinions? Mm. You know what was most um, impactful for me was seeing how open people were you know, people opening the door and having me come in and people wanting to share their story and wanting to see something different for their community. And the one thing that um, always sticks with me is that regardless of ethnicity, regardless of age, regardless of income, everybody that was open their door had the same goal, which was to provide for their families and to provide better in a better way for their families. Um, and so, you know, that was one thing that really brought communities together when door knocking is just we all want to provide better for our families and for our communities. Was there anything that the families had in common besides the issues about knowing how to get involved or how to step up? Mm. I, I guess I'm asking do you think government does a good job telling people how to mm. interact with them? You know I think government does a good job telling people that they should get involved but you know, I don't think they do a good job in giving um, avenues for people to get involved. And really that's what, you know, the role of the organizer is, is to kind of, you know, put out their elbow and make sure that we're making room for people to get engaged. And, you know, whether it was making sure that there was translation at city council meetings or making sure that, you know, we were doing a briefing meeting before and making sure that we understood, you know, really what is the role of a mayor? What does a council member do? And explaining those key functions that are really different for um, different governments in different parts of the world where many of our community members come from. It sounds like your job is to get in there uh, and spark people and then frankly disappear and let them stand on their own. Absolutely. And um, you know, that's really what community organizing is all about, right? I mean, if you're doing your job well, the hope is that leaders are really um, the ones that are carrying the message, the ones that are pushing, the ones that are strategizing, and um, you know, at the end, the ones that are getting the pat on the back of winning their issue. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Working Partnerships was very involved in a, a very important campaign to raise the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that was after your time at mm -hmm. Sacred Heart. Um, that sounds like a great example of community empowerment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the vast majority of the people that I worked with were folks making minimum wage. Mm. And um, that difference of $2, of having them have that money to make the rent, to have put food on the table, I mean, that was the difference between um, being able to provide for your family or not. And people in Santa Clara County, thankfully, knew that it was the right thing to do. And 
uh, we were successful. Now, when you say pay the rent or put food on the table, the concept of minimum wage workers is the myth. It's teenagers. Mm. And so you've just uh, disabused me of that myth. Absolutely. I mean, you know, unfortunately, what we know is that, um, you know, minimum wage workers aren't able to provide for their families. And, um, you know, the, the more that we're able to raise their wage and make sure that we're um, helping them and helping the economy, um, you know, it, it's not teenagers, it's moms, dads, single moms, it's grandparents taking care of their grandkids. And, um, you know, it's, it's important, it's important topic that we have to continue to work on, not just, of course, we won in San Jose, but in other cities. Well, that sounds like a great uh, project. Um, what are some of the other things that you've been involved with now that you are with working partnerships? You know, um, around food justice has been an issue that um, has been um, really a priority for us. Um, you know, what we know is in talking, going door to door, and making phone calls to community members is that um, healthy food is not accessible to all. And, um, you know, we know that the obesity epidemic is taking over the country and, you know, we can all individually do what we can to work on that. But the reality is that for many of people in our community, having access and being able to pay for healthy food is just not a reality. So what is food justice? Um, it sounds like, well, gee, we should all know it's, mm. uh, we'll have good food, but it can't be that simple. Yeah, you know, I, I really think about it in three ways, in three areas. One being about healthy food access and making sure that, you know, we have supermarkets in neighborhoods. And if we don't have supermarkets, that we at least have convenience stores that carry healthy food. Um, I think it's also about um, the, the food system and making sure that we have a plan for its sustainability. Um, and I think lastly, it's also around food workers. It's about um, the people that allow us to have food on our tables. You know, um, food workers and farm workers are among the most low paid workers and the most exploited workers around the world. And so food justice is really thinking about um, from the moment a seed is planted to the moment where you're actually eating that carrot. Mm. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, I'd like to explore each of those areas in a little more depth and here's some of the other fascinating stuff you're working on. Great. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Santa Clara County Supervisor Dave Cortezzi, and one of the things that people ask me all the time is, how can I get involved? How can I make a difference? I have people contact me, constituents, who say, I'm ready to be involved more with my community. What do you recommend? Well, one of the things I would recommend is getting involved with the local Democratic Party. Uh, it's not only something that you can and should do as a Democrat, but it can be something very inspiring. Um, this is the party uh, that stands up for people most in need, and they can certainly use your help. As an elected official, I know that. As a de Democratic activist in my own right, um, I know that you can make a difference by being involved, by being involved on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with our local Democratic Party. Want to know how to contact them? Do it by phone, 408. 445-9500, or go to their website, www.sccdp.org. Your local Democratic Party, a great place to get involved. Welcome back to Democratic Television and our guest, Maria Noel Fernandez. Uh, Maria, you were telling me uh, your definition or what you thought food justice meant and mm -hmm. you talked about it in several different capacities. Um, could you go through that a again and give us a little bit more detail on, you know, what are people's needs? Uh, you said uh, there aren't necessarily areas within a geographical mm -hmm. area that people can get sustainable food. Yeah, you know, in Santa Clara County, we've been doing some studies and really going door to door to talk to people. And what we've found is that people um, don't have transportation to get mm -hmm. to supermarkets that are outside of their neighborhood. Um, and so they really rely on the corner stores, the convenience stores to get their everyday groceries. Um, and what that means is that grocery stores are really providing families for the ingredients to make their everyday dinners mm -hmm. and lunches. And what we also know is that those convenience stores uh, don't necessarily provide 
um, nutritious food. And so, and what we mean by that is fresh fruits and vegetables, um, low fat yogurt, low fat milk, and things that can really um, help make a nutritious meal for families. Um, but what's really exciting to me about that is that in addition to talking to community members, we've been talking to store owners. And store owners are excited about the idea of being able to provide healthy food. They just don't know how. Mm. And so we've really um, begun to explore how it is we can marry this demand and make sure that the supply is there in communities and um, allow for people to have access, regardless of where you live in Santa Clara County, that you have access to healthy, nutritious food for your family. So that's great. That seems like a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. um, and we wonder, why aren't there even bananas here? Mm -hmm. And now you're saying, well, maybe they didn't know how to go through the ordering process or mm -hmm. realize that people would buy it. Or that, you know, that they might have the banana, but it's $3 a banana, right? Oh. And because of the cost and um, having s small convenience stores not know how to get small supplies and resources, right? And so um, community members have really been asking for um, fruits and vegetables and store owners are really ready to step up and um, specifically in communities of color for low-income communities where we haven't seen supermarkets wanting to go in um, and we're having convenience stores step in and really play that role. That sounds like the concept I heard of food desert which mm -hmm. means you are not surrounded by um, good healthy mm -hmm. nutritious stuff that mm -hmm. you can eat almost as a convenience uh, like grapes or apples or carrots. Yeah, yeah, we've seen, and you know, this isn't just in Santa Clara County, but around the nation, many communities, and particularly low-income communities, and especially in communities of color, where there really is no way to get healthy food. And what you do have, though, is, you know, the um, fast food restaurants that are readily available. And the reality is many of our family members are working two, three jobs to make ends meet. And what's quick and what's affordable and what's in your neighborhood yeah, yeah. Is, are those fast food restaurants. Okay. Well, uh, what are some of the other components of um, food justice? Well, we also think about the um, sustainability of the system. And what that means is making sure that, you know, if we're going to um, work the land, that we're making sure that um, we're not depleting the land of those resources that we need to keep our communities going, to keep us fed. Um, so making sure that we're really paying attention to that, looking at pesticides, looking at mm. really how it is that we're growing the food and making sure that we're not depleting the land of the resources. Um, and the other topic really is around um, the workers and making sure that the people who are making it possible for us to eat every day are being taken care of and um, not only the folks that work the land but that um, the folks that make the distribution happen that um, get the food onto our tables. Um, sounds like very worthy work. Mm. Um, and so uh, workers working the land sounds like that also relates to the question of immigration reform, mm -hmm. uh, something else I'm sure you're very interested in. Absolutely, especially now. I mean, you know, we really continue to have a window of opportunity. Um, you know, it, it's a difficult political time, of course, but I think that now is the most important time for us as community activists, community members, leaders, to really continue to push and continue to push for what's best for our entire economy and for the entire United States. Um, it's about bringing more than 11 million people out of the shadows and um, really lifting us all up together. Um, and I know it's certainly a hotly debated mm -hmm. topic. Unfortunately, it mm -hmm. shouldn't be. Uh, there seems to be agreement on things and then there seems to be some unreasonable expectations uh, that are thrown in the mix seemingly to jam mm -hmm. any progress from being made. Yeah, sadly, you know, I think it's very easy to get caught in um, that debate and very easy to argue about one piece of it. But I think bottom line, it's about family unity and it's about keeping families together and um, making sure that all people that are here um, who are already working and who are already paying taxes are really able to thrive and that are continue to makes America what it is. Yeah, it's just frustrating that sort of driven by ideology, uh, there are folks uh, for whatever reason who say 
deport people who aren't here legally, there seems to be no thought back to the food justice discussion mm -hmm. about the impact that would have on our affordability of uh, healthy foods yeah, and available food and locally grown food. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the reality is that the folks that are getting food onto our tables um, are likely undocumented immigrant workers. And, um, you know, it's about them, but it's also about you know, folks that are in the high tech industry that have issues around immigration. I mean, it, we really can't just characterize the issue of immigration reform with, you know, with one face because immigration reform touches all of us, whether mm -hmm. or not we're undocumented either. You know, we have our neighbors and family members that are touched by this issue. And it's really our time now to come together and say we want to keep pushing and we need immigration reform now. Um, it would be great to get that issue behind us. Mm -hmm. So let's say we do, then there are other issues. I know you're also an affordable housing advocate. Yeah. Uh, you need know, a little more affordable housing. Absolutely. I mean, we know that um, the average median rent here is through the roof, right? It's more than almost $2,000 for a two bedroom apartment. And um, that plus what the minimum wage is now, I mean, it's very hard for working families to make ends meet and pay for housing. And so there are some opportunities in San Jose. San Jose um, somewhat recently passed a Nexus study, which would look at the housing impact fee and how to really make sure we have resources to fund affordable housing in San Jose. And hopefully this will expand to different cities. So it's not just San Jose, but in all Santa Clara County, we're able to build more affordable housing. Housing impact fee, mm -hmm. what's that? Well, essentially what it does is it is a fee on housing developments. Mm. And the idea behind that is that there really is a nexus between building more um, housing and the need to also build affordable housing because we are gonna bring in more workers, mm -hmm because we're gonna have more people that really do need some assistance in being able to pay for housing for their families. And some cities have actually moved on that, as I understand it, they're taking steps. Absolutely, they have and they've been successful. And what we know is that um, we can do it for San Jose and we can really do it for the entire county. Mm, that's pretty exciting. It is. Uh, and that leads to the question of transportation. And mm. if you can have people live affordably in the community, the transportation issues are dealt with more so than people commuting long distances or uh, packing houses or garages with people, mm -hmm. uh, families that don't have a good quality of life as a result. Absolutely. And I think that's, you know, um, Silicon Valley has a great history and it's a beautiful place. Um, and a lot of people think of, you know, if you're not, don't, you're not from here, you think of Silicon Valley as being this very rich um, place, but we, we know that people are living in garages, they're living, you know, tend to a living room. And that's really what I saw when I was doing the door knocking, that oh. that's people's reality. Yeah. So the need for housing is tremendous in Silicon Valley. What are some of the other things that uh, you or working partnerships are looking to do to uh, make their community a better place? I know uh, food justice is important, mm -hmm. affordable housing. Uh, it seems to me a lot of this, and you mentioned this earlier, has to do with spending priorities. Mm -hmm. And spending priorities can be daunting to folks who might think, well, I don't have a PhD in economics, how can I weigh in? Mm -hmm. I mean, the way you can really weigh in is by realizing that you are an expert in your area and that you have the opportunity to at least engage in the conversation about what it is that you're seeing in your neighborhood and what you need for your neighborhood to continue to thrive. And so around the community budget, um, we have a program called the Community Budget Working Group. Mm. And what we really do is look at how it is everyday people like you and I can get engaged in the budget and make sure that whatever the city or the county is deciding is reflective of our needs. And so it's about going to council meetings, it's about sitting down with your council member, which for people can be daunting, but the community budget really um, develops people so that they feel comfortable and confident to sit down and have those conversations that are crucial to have. With all this going on, you sound like a busy person. How do you find respite yourself? How do you get away from all this uh, busyness? <laughs> well, you know, I spend a lot of time with my family, with my husband. Um, but we also have a 140-pound dog. 
a Newfoundland that keeps wow. me busy <laughs> and, you know, I'm madly in love with my dog. <laughs> and so we like to go on, you know, walk, go for walks and explore and, you know, just be a part of community by sitting in a park and seeing the surrounding. Well, that sounds wonderful. We have about two minutes left. If people want to uh, communicate with you, uh, how could they get hold of you with yeah. what's out there? Well, we have our website, which is www.wapusa, which is wpusa.org. Um, our phone number as well, which is 408-445-4578. You can also email me, whatever's easiest, uh, right? And my email is Maria at wpusa.org and we really ask that if there's anything kind of in the pit of your stomach that kind of says you know what i want to do something i want to get engaged please you know i welcome the audience to really join in um, this effort to make sure that our government is uh, really accountable and reflective of our values and priorities do you think you'll find a, a day when somebody in the community comes forward and says i want to run for office are you ready for that? Well, I would love that. I would love that. I mean, that's really, you know, um, why a part of why we do what we do is because we want to bring up leaders to um, need, be the next decision makers and be at that table and make sure that um, they can serve the community in the way that they desire. So if they want to do it, well, I will do everything possible to help them do that. That sounds pretty amazing. Uh, well, thank you very much for sharing so much. Uh, appreciate you taking the time away from your uh, busy day and your 140-pound dog <laughs> and husband and family. Uh, thanks for being on the show, and we look forward to uh, a lot more important work. Thank you, Steve. Great. Thanks for watching Democratic Television. Give us a call at 408-445-9500 or visit our website www.sccdp.org Help make a difference.